Welcome to AWR University videos. The topic of this video is Smith charts. In this video, I will be explaining the meaning and purpose of the Smith chart, how to create the chart in Microwave Office, then going over a few basic applications of the chart, and finish with an example problem. Now before I create the chart in Microwave Office, it is important to understand the purpose of the Smith chart and the meaning of the axes. The Smith chart is a graphing tool. It helps us to find the impedance along a transmission line, the voltage standing wave ratio, and reflection coefficients. And just so you can picture the man behind the chart, this is Philip H. Smith. He created the Smith chart in 1939. I know this Smith chart may be a little overwhelming, but not to worry, because I will not use anything this detailed in my examples. The real axis is measured on the horizontal line by following the circles, and it represents the normalized resistance. The imaginary axis is measured on the vertical line following the arcs, and it measures the normalized reactance. The top of the circle is inductance because reactance is positive, thus making the bottom part of the circle capacitance because the reactance is negative. A short circuit is on the left end of the real axis, while an open circuit is on the right end of the real axis. The perimeter of the chart shows the wavelength along the transmission line. 180 degrees is equal to 4 over wavelength. Clockwise movement is wavelength towards the generator, which is also called the source, and counterclockwise movement is wavelength towards the load, and this helps us to determine the position of the maximum and minimum voltage relative to the load. Welcome to Microwave Office. I'm going to show you how easy it is to create a Smith chart. Simply go up here to the toolbar to add a new schematic so we can create the circuit to analyze on a Smith chart. And we'll call it Smith chart example. Now to add some elements, we'll start with our transmission line, which will be phase TLIN, and then a resistor, so under lumped elements, resistor load, and then our last thing, a port. And we'll change the values now so that when we come back to this example later in the video, we can jump right into the problem. So the length right now will be 0 degrees at a frequency of 1 and a load impedance value of 25 plus J100. And before we add our graph, let's go to Project right-click Project Options, Edit, to change our frequency steps. And we're going to have it stop at 0.5 instead. Remember to press Apply, then OK. Now we can go up here to Add New Graph, and here's our graph. Make sure to check Smith Chart, then OK. Right-click, Add New Measurement, port parameters S, Smith chart example, to port 1 from port 1. It all looks good, so let's press OK. And our lightning bolt to analyze. And there we have our point. And now you know how easy it is to create a Smith chart in Microwave Office. Let's go over how to analyze a Smith chart. Now that I've showed you how to create a Smith chart in Microwave Office, you need to understand the importance of the values and how to use them to find the generalized reflection coefficient, the normalized impedance, position of maximum and minimum voltage, the voltage standing wave ratio, and admittance. But let's say you're in the middle of an exam. I don't think you're going to be able to just pull out your laptop, open up Microwave Office, and solve for the impedance along the transmission line. So that's why I'm going to show you the equations used to find the exact same values. So if you're in the middle of a test, you'll know exactly what to do. 
To find the generalized reflection coefficient, we first start with the characteristic impedance of a transmission line, Z0, that is terminated with the load impedance, ZL. Now we want to find the ratio between the incident wave propagating to the right and the reflected wave propagating to the left that resulted from the termination of the load, ZL. This is the equation we found when setting the origin Z equal to zero at the load. When V plus is factored out of the equation, V minus is replaced with gamma L, which is the reflection coefficient. Therefore, the reflection coefficient is equal to the ratio of V minus to V plus. When Z equals zero, Z naught is equal to the load impedance. Therefore, we find this equation, which leads us to this. The reflection coefficient ranges from negative one to positive one, and the line is matched when ZL is equal to Z naught. Another way to find the change in voltage is to use the normalized impedance. To find the normalized impedance, divide the load impedance by the characteristic line impedance. The complex answer gives the constant normalized resistance and the constant normalized reactance. Draw a circle starting at the load point with the radius of the magnitude of the load reflection coefficient. The circle represents all possible reflection coefficients along the transmission line. This finds the values of the transmission line impedance at any location. The position of the maximum voltage is the angle between gamma L and the line theta equals zero, relative to the load position, meaning theta is moving in a clockwise direction, and this is measured in radians. Position of minimum voltage is the same, except you're finding the angle between gamma L and theta equal to pi. The voltage standing wave ratio can be read on a Smith chart at the point of the positive real gamma axis and the gamma circle. The voltage standing wave ratio varies between infinity, open and short circuit, and one, a matched load. The normalized admittance is the inverse of the normalized impedance. Admittance and impedance stay on the same circle with the magnitude of gamma L as the radius, but are on opposite sides. Now let us go back into Microwave Office and do another practice problem. This is the point that we found earlier, and it is also the point of the normalized impedance. And if we right click and go to Add Marker, our cursor now turns to a plus sign, and if we click on the triangle at the point, we now have the complex values for the normalized impedance. And if we right click and click on properties, we can change it to the reflection coefficient. Press apply, and there we have the real and imaginary values. And if we change the format from real and imaginary to the magnitude and angle, we are now given the distance between this point and the real axis at theta equal to zero. This will help us to find values for the minimum and maximum voltage. And an easy way to be able to change the electrical length in degrees on the transmission line is by going back to our Smith chart example and go up here to the tool tune, sorry, the tune tool on our toolbar and select the electrical length, the EL, and going back to our graph and selecting the tune button. Now we can change the electrical length of our transmission line without having to go back and forth between the schematic and graph. So now to find the minimum voltage, we simply add 180 degrees to 50.91, which is 230.9. And there we have it. Right click, add marker, at 
negative 180 degrees, we have our minimum voltage. And by converting 230.9 degrees to radians, you can find the length of the transmission line at the minimum voltage. And maximum voltage is on the real axis when theta is equal to zero, which is just 50.9. And now that we're on the real axis, we not only have our maximum voltage, but if we change the properties, change the properties to impedance in real and imaginary, the R value given is also our voltage standing wave ratio. And the last thing we're going to go over is how to find the admittance. And to do that, and to do that, we simply change the angle to 180 degrees because admittance is on the same circle with the radius of the magnitude of gamma L but on the opposite side of the circle. And if we change the properties to the reflection coefficient in magnitude and angle, you can see the 180 degrees difference and the magnitude is the same at 0.82. Thank you very much and that concludes this AWR University video.